Come on, Tottenham, stick it in the goal. Come on, Tottenham, the base are bloody slow. You are the first team, the last team my dreams have ever seen. Put on that lily white and run on to that green. White Hart Lane has seen its pain, it's had its load of nights. We fought our team through thick and thin and all those boring nights. And when the game is done, we'll sing a song and talk it out all night. Hey! Come on, Tottenham, stick it in the goal. Come on, Tottenham, don't be so bloody slow. You are the first team. Episode 30, Season 5, Tom Motspur Family Podcast. Joining me for a midweek episode, or end week episode even, of the podcast, um, my co-host, John Steggles. Hello, good evening. And back again for the second time on the podcast, Spurs commentator Daniel Wynn. Hi there. Hi, Daniel. Um, right, so when I approached you, I think it must have been August, uh, certainly early in the season, um, about coming on the, on the podcast, and, and you kindly arranged to come on, and... Um, the date that we had in mind at the time was was, six, was the 16th of September, which was supposed to be the day after the very first match at um, at the new stadium. Unfortunately, yeah. things didn't go to plan. Um, that that we we we've, we've obviously there was a delay, as everybody knows. Um, but you did kindly agree to appear, um, and we had a nice chat about all things Spurs and. Uh, um, some of your moments from uh, commentating on, on Spurs matches and, and so forth, um, but I really was keen to get you back on the pod um, once the new stadium um, had opened, and here we are, um, 24 hours on from the first official game. Um, yeah. What better place to start with? Um, uh, I mean, Daniel, what, what, what are your what were your first impressions? I mean, you've obviously probably been there a few times before, but proper, yeah. proper, proper, the proper match yesterday. F- um, yeah. Official opening. I mean, I've been there a few times during the build process, and that left me open mouthed. You got the sense of scale of, of the thing. I mean, even at the finale, yeah, you know, the last time we were in N17 officially, you know, you could walk through sort of, you know, a third of it, right? Just going underneath Paxton Road. Remember Paxton Road? Yeah. Thing of the past. <laughs> <laughs> um, and as I said, I've been there during the build process when the, when the stadium was complete, you know, you, it was a building site, but it was a complete bowl, and it was just massive. And I just couldn't wait to see it. Well, I saw it a couple of times during that process, and then I saw it finished a few weeks ago, and it was like breathtaking. And then we did. I had to go to test some bit, uh, some bits and pieces in there, and just blown away by the level of detail in every area. You know, you go to some grounds, you kind of expect the corporate areas, you know, the sponsors areas, etc., to be immaculate but you know the general emission areas as the club call it is just superb and you know we did the two test events but last night it, you know it, there aren't any words and for a commentator it's difficult to, to be in a position where, where there are no words but you know i found myself thinking this is the third west stand that i've, that I've been in at tottenham right and you know i found myself thinking back to that very first day that i went and i think i'm put on twitter after the test event i felt five years old again <laughs> it's like i fell in love all over again with tottenham and it did feel like white heart lane it looked like white heart lane just a bit bigger white heart lane on steroids but it felt like a home straight away you know you move house, you go into a new house, and it's an empty shell. Well, that was a home, and it was palatial. It, just every, every area we went in, I mean, Jim Beglin said to me last night, he was working for for the Premier League, he said, it's just palatial. Everyone that you speak to, young, old, was walking in and walking around open-mouthed. And... You're often in awe of certain buildings and you're jealous of other clubs, or we certainly have been down the years, but everyone's looking at us and that's our home. We're going to be there for 100 years now. I, I couldn't be happier. Do you know that that um, that, that, that phrase, that when, when there's always a new build or and they, they say it's, it's meant to last, it's meant to last you know, a particular period of time, that, that couldn't be more, more the case, I think, with this stadium. It really is built for the 21st century. Um, and and you know, when you consider in the last I don't know ten or fifteen years there have been so many new, new stadiums and I, football stadiums and I think particularly um, of the Emirates um, yeah. the, the the new Wembley um, the Etihad which 
was originally uh, for the Commonwealth Games in, in 2002, um, and then it was con- converted. Even the, even the Olympic Stadium or the London Stadium, whatever they call it now, and none of them, none of them are a patch on on, on Wembley. And I, I had a just digress slightly. I was having a conversation today with two colleagues at work. Um, one's a Brentford fan, and the other one's an Arsenal fan. And the Brentford fan was asking me. I mean, it's genuinely asking me what, what my opinion of the stadium was. And I just said, look, I, I, it really is world class. And obviously getting a bit, a bit of stick from the Arsenal fan and, you know, as, as expected and, and the usual comments about it looking from above like a, like a, like a toilet. Um, I really wish, well, you, you've, I mean, you've only got to listen to, I was looking at listening to something that Ali McCoy said this morning on, on, on Talk Sport. You've only got to listen to people who aren't Spurs fans talk about it. And mm. it is, it, it's every anybody who's seen it will will say that it's a fantastic um, stadium. Uh, yeah. The comment you made about feeling like a five year old, I think for all of us there was that element of when we, the first time that we set foot in that stadium, certainly for a proper proper game, um, coming up those stairs, it's that feeling of the very first time we went to White Hart Lane as a kid when you can smell the grass and. It's got that magical feel, and that was very much the case with with, with, the, with the new stadium. It's like you're falling in love with the club all over again. Yeah, yeah. How much of a sense of? I mean, it's to you. Is it White Hart Lane? Is it? Is it? Yeah. Is it a new entity altogether? What? what... Uh, no, it's White Hart Lane. You know, the the ground has been rebuilt, but there's no other club in the country that has rebuilt their ground on the same site. The only comparison is Wembley. You know, every other club have moved. You know, Arsenal haven't moved far, but they've moved. You know, West Ham moved a Arsenal, long way. Arsenal have moved further than most. Yeah, well, West Ham has certainly moved further than most as well. I mean, Arsenal's only around the corner. You, you know, you can walk past the old Highbury Stadium on the way, depending on which way you go. But you know, we are on the same site. On the same site, so it's the same journey. It's the same pubs. It's the same whatever that you do. Your pre-match ritual is the same. Obviously now there's more options because you can go into the ground earlier. There's better food choices. You know, it's just a nicer place to be. It's it's absolutely White Hart Lane. It's absolutely Tottenham. It's not a new entity. It's not a soulless, empty bowl. And whatever Arsenal fans say about it looking like a toilet or what have you, all you can say back to them is like, they were over the moon with the Emirates. Well, the Emirates has been open, what is it, 12 years now. It was designed three or four years before that. So look at it literally. Ours has just opened. It's the best of the best. It's the most modern of the most modern stadiums. There's no get. That's an undeniable fact. And not only that, it's pleasing on the eye. It's closer to the pitch than any other new stadium. It, and it's ours. <laughs> Absolutely. The thing that cracks for me up about the Arsenal fans saying about it looking like a Lucy is they then say in the same breath, "Well, you copied our stadium design." And they copied uh, Sporting Lisbon, right? Exactly. Yeah. You yeah. look at Sporting Lisbon's ground, it's exactly the same as that. And you know what? They should take it as a compliment if some parts of it have been have been have been copied. At the end of the day, that sort of design in of the sort of curve at the top of the stand, that's how modern stadiums are. I'd rather it be like that than if you walk into Leicester or you walk into Southampton. It's the same stadium, it's a Meccano kit, right? And this is there's no other stadium like it. No, they, they. I mean, those like, going back to Leicester and Sunderland. Sunderland's just like one of those on steroids. Southampton's the same as Leicester. They, yeah. they were all of an age, and I think they have to. Stadiums design has moved on, and there's only so many things you can do with a stadium. It's like a car. It's got to have four wheels and a couple of seats and a steering wheel. It's yeah. still a car. They all, they all look the same essentially. Exactly. So you get a Ferrari at one end and a Mini at the other. And, the, and no disrespect to Leicester, no disrespect to Southampton. They're not Tottenham Hotspur. Ours had to be bigger. Ours had to be better. And the ambition of the club's board has been shown in the training ground, in the lodge, in the stadium. And now the next stage and the next box to tick is, you know, the squad and the team. And, you know, people said they're not going to be around to see the stadium built. They absolutely did. I bumped into the club lawyer yesterday and he said, this has been going on since 2001, since the very first year they arrived. And it, it's, it's a massive project. And people say Daniel Levy was critical when he was fussy. He had every right to be. They were spending so much money. And they're the guardians of the purse strings. It had to be right if they're spending all that money. I'd rather someone 
take ownership and want it to be perfect in every area of the ground. And look what, and look what they've delivered. I mean, uh, they must have slept well last night, right? Absolutely. We, I, I, yeah, the relief would have been palpable, I think. Totally. We had a we had a question from Ed Brad, um, one of our listeners um, on the stadium. Uh, he just simply says, "Was it worth the wait?" Abs- of course it was. It, unequivocally, if someone could have delivered a stadium two years ago and it was like a Leicester and it was like a Southampton, or it meant waiting two years for this, end of the day, it's taken just over two and a half years to build. If you have to wait six months, okay, we had to wait six months. It's not going anywhere now. You know, we're going to be using it five times in, in April alone, yeah? it's This is here. It's here to stay. It's part of the community. And we should be so proud of that stadium. And I'm, I'm buzzing still. I can't wait till next Tuesday. I mean, uh, there's a lot, always a lot of criticism of Levy. He does think, or you know, players on the cheap and things. You know, you know, not spending the money. But it, there's no way he scrimped and saved on this. It is a, it is the the, the pinnacle of what can yeah. be achieved in stadium design. People <laughs> and can't it, have it. Pe- sorry, no, sorry. I was just going to say one of the, some of the words in his um, in the program. We're mm. not here to develop and take a profit and leave. We're here for the long term. And I think that goes not just for the football club, but for the area as well. This is a step in the regeneration of the area and it improves Tottenham as a whole. I mean, not being putting Tottenham down, but it is a ghetto. It is one of the most impoverished parts. Edmonton is one of the most impoverished parts of London. And hopefully the, the club can pull it along and drag it up. And it's important it's, we stayed there. Certainly. There's hundreds of jobs being created at that stadium for local people. The fan ambassadors, as I understand it, are all employed from local people and other areas of the club as well. They're taking on local match day staff. You know, just going back to Daniel Levy, people can't have it both ways. They can't say he's he's tight, he's a skin flint, he doesn't spend money. And then in the very next breath, oh, look at that stadium, it's five hundred million pounds or whatever they say, over budget. The two things are at odds with each other. Yeah. Yeah. Going back a few years, um, I say probably 2015, 2016, um, on the podcast, we we, we were looking ahead to um, possible the, the new stadium and where Spurs would play. Because at the time, there was there was much discussion. Nothing had been confirmed whether Spurs would play at Wembley, for example, whether it be Milton Keynes somewhere else, etc. And I remember saying on the on the podcast then that. Um, the likelihood is it probably would be at Wembley, but wherever it would be, it would be, you know it would be for one season. Okay, it transpired it was slightly more than one season, but it would be it would be a it would be a necessary short term pain mm. for for long term gain gain and, and 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 that's certainly been the case. And 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 you know what? Whilst it was really frustrating at the beginning of this season when it didn't open on time and and when it just sort of dragged out and dragged out and and you. I was speculating, talking to friends were speculating, you know, would it be next season? Would it be some point this season? Would it be the United game, etc., etc.? I think towards the end, I, I got a bit tired and I just thought, you know what, it, it'll be, it'll happen when it ha- when it happens. And I, and I and I sort of try to not think about it, but it's it's great that we're here. And um, uh, I was so glad when. Um, I think it was the I can't remember the, the Arsenal game at Wembley whether it had already been confirmed that by that point whether we were going to move in or, or not or it, it must have been close but just after that yeah yeah it, but but that certainly had a sense that it's very likely at the, at the, at the time that that would would, yeah. would would be the last game and I just remember thinking this is it this is surely it and and it's yeah it's good good to be back home um the other thing to point out is I remember again about two and a half years ago. Um, when we were still playing at White Hart Lane, but when they started to, they'd um, taken out a corner of the Paxton and they started to build part of the stadium. Yeah. And as you're walking down the high road, you closer you get, suddenly you see these big concrete blocks and you could see it over the coming months, it was getting bigger and bigger and, 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 and it was huge. One of my concerns was, I mean, we knew the fact that obviously we weren't going to move out of the area and that was going to have a big impact but <clears throat> and, and help going forward in comparison to all these other stadiums, but... I looked at these big concrete blocks and I thought new stadiums are all just very sort of like I don't know purpose built they're not they're not like these fantastic Archibald Leach designs that that you know <laughs> White Hart Lane, Ibrox, Villa Park etc <clears throat> and it's just going to look like the rest of them and and this whilst it's modern and whilst maybe it from the outside it's I mean, people describe it as a giant spaceship and and, and whatnot it it does have a sense of character it, it is unique that 
that wall, for example, that seventeen and a half thousand wall, that's there's nothing like it in in um, in England. It's and the closeness to the pitch, it it does have a sense of character, um, which is which is fantastic. So it's. It, it, it's not like your every as you, as you said earlier. It's not like your, your Leicester's and your Southamptons and and all of these other, other st- stadiums, which all look, you know, very similar. I've got to say. That's right. Yeah, it's, it still looks like White Hart Lane on the inside, mm-hmm. a bigger version, but it looks like White Hart Lane. It does look like a spaceship is landed in North Seventeen. It really does. It does. It, it's, uh, but it's beautiful. It's a wonderful thing to behold. Mm-hmm. The, you mentioned also the the regeneration, and I know that um, you know this stadium build was was something that, that the club had been looking at for years, and I'm sure obviously they had one eye on on regeneration. And Daniel Lee referred to it um, in in his little um, speech or clip but, uh, during this um, ceremony yesterday. Um, we we had the unfortunately we had the the riots in Tottenham in 2011 and it's it's amazing that that from the ashes of that this stadium has risen and and hopefully with it well some jobs now and hopefully many more and 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 yeah it, it if it can have a knock on effect we the, we care about the football side of things let you know let's be blunt we're we're, we're Tottenham fans but if it can go beyond that and and provide the, the regeneration that, that's been talked about in the area, that would be fantastic. That, that would be a good thing. I think Daniel Levy said something like um, that the club have got a social responsibility, I think. I'm paraphrasing him here. And it's good that he's thinking along, along those lines. It's good that he's thinking beyond just a business and beyond just a football club. Um, and I, think, I, I can't think of too many other chairmen that, that think in those terms. No, he, he he very much has the uh, the club and the community at heart, and uh, you know, for for like I said, for whatever faults he has got as a chairman, he's pulled this one out of the bag and the training ground as well. They're they're things of beauty that the club can be proud of. Absolutely, and you know, don't underestimate the impact that has on on potential players. You know, especially at the training ground. I mean, the stadium they're there once every couple of weeks on average, yeah, but the training ground that's their office. And you know, wherever you work as well, there's a you get a real nice feeling if you work in a brand spanking new office with the best facilities, and that helps. It really does help. Yeah. The thing is, there was a, a thing on the Premier League show tonight about the West Ham Academy, and it's basically just porter cabins in an old barn. <laughs> and it, you, you you wonder when players come and have a look if they if they get the choice, where would they want to go? Somewhere that's got a glorious stadium and a lovely training ground or somewhere that's got a barn and a vast cavern of a uh, athletics tracks surrounded I mean Spurs wouldn't be competing with West Ham for players it, you know, no, it's true two different it's two different two different levels but I totally get your point it's you know it's chalk and cheese it's a no-brainer if you're going to look at one it's like comparing apples with oranges you, you just can't this is true this is true. I, I heard a stat last night that's saying that um at Wembley we were selling about 20 Three thousand pints. Yeah, I heard that. Um, and last night we actually sold forty thousand pints of beer. Wow! I heard it was fifty thousand at Inter for the Inter game. Wow! Wow! I mean, so wow! Well, that's that's amazing. Yeah. The I thing is, probably... if they want to keep the fans in, it will keep them in. You know that that's the kind of thing that they want. They say it's that uh, that money that they they, they it's going to be generated. It's going to be good for the club. And the breweries, the master stroke, you know everything they've yeah. done. Yeah, you know, the detail. I mean, I don't know if you had a walk around the stadium. I assume you did, but I love that wall in the south stand where you got the old program covers. I love that. <laughs> there's there's some nice touches. I love the fact that the old ground, you know, the the, the rubble and stuff is crushed up to make the concourse. Yeah, so you're literally absolutely. walking on. Yeah, yeah. You no, know, they 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 thought about stuff. They you know, it's not just a soulless, empty stadium. The um, the microbrewery is quite interesting. The fact that you can just look in and just see, um, see that uh, it's there's also um, Daniel. I, I I don't know if you're if you if you've seen this bit, but um, it's, it's particularly interesting to me. But um, on the sort of where the west stand meets the north stand, um, yeah. just outside Lily White House, there's a server room, um, which is visible from within the concourse. Yeah. 
Okay, I haven't seen um, them. So I only know that because uh, my, um, about a couple, a few months ago, when um, end, end of end of last year, um, the company I worked for, we um, installed um, or I installed a uh, piece of equipment which is used by um, the uh, video editors at Spurs. Oh yeah, um, and it, 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 it was installed in a server room which is located in the concourse, which is fine. Um, behind a door, there's a pass that gets you in the door. Um, that's that's obviously you know locked away and not accessible. But the the actual server room or data center, um, it's got glass panels all the way along along the side. And I, and I remember asking somebody at Spurs at the time, I was like, is this going to be like boarded off or you know, or is it, is it going to be um, opaque, uh, opaque glass? And he was like, nope, nope. Uh, Apparently, so the story goes. Dan, Daniel Levy wanted that to be transparent and for people to see it, and to people to see like this shiny data center with all these sort of flashing lights from from servers and, and and whatnot, just to sort of highlight the fact that this is a state of the art future stadium. Wow, well, it's it's funny you mentioned the uh, video editors. Um, where we used to meet in the old stadium um, was effectively the edit suite, which was. I guess at some point an old storage cupboard in the back mm-hmm. of the Legends Lounge. It was tiny. The gallery they've got there now is it's, it's like a TV studio. It's, in it's huge. I've, I've I've been in there as well. Isn't it? Right. So yeah. you know what? Right. It's massive, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it, 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 but it's just weird. You've got you've got that within the stadium. You've got the microbrewery. You've got um, all those nice touches to to, to White Hart Lane. The the, the the wallpaper that you mentioned. The the centre spot in the yeah. south stand, the 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 tire. I'd forgotten about the time capsule. Um, all of these things, and then alongside the that, you've flags got. Come as well, I think. Sorry, isn't, the old corners? isn't there the corner flag bit to come as well at yeah, some point? Yeah, and and then alongside all of that, you've obviously got the um, longest bar in is it Europe or? Yeah, there's yeah. the longest bar in Europe. You've got the longest video wall in Europe, I think, in the foyer. You've got the biggest club store in Europe. Yeah. Um, you've got two pitches. You've got a massive underground car park as well. <laughs> the list is endless. You know, I have, I have read the White House. Yeah, there's just so many features. I have read grumbles today. People saying, you know, there wasn't enough people and the bar was rammed and it was still long queues and stuff. But the first game with that many people in the stadium, you're going to get some teething problems and they're going to iron these little kinks out. So, okay. you know, it, it, that kind of thing d- doesn't bother me. I'd rather that than people say the players can't settle and we and we got beat two 0 Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, and did you did you see the video that David Howes put out? I think on the weekend of of the changing rooms. Yes. Wow. Yeah. I was right. Walking with him walking around and there's the, the like the the players lounge and things like that. Where yeah. yeah. And the relaxation room and the massage room and the plunge pool they had and yeah, it's incredible. When you compare that footage to uh, um, when you, when I did stadium tours of the of the old lady, and as much as I give my right not to have one more game in that lovely old stadium, mm. the improvement in the facilities and what we have now, you know, it's it's difference between a scooter and a um, you know a, a seven fifty motorbike. It's ridiculous. Mm. It's such such a step up. Definitely. I mean, small things like having the players' lounge right next to the dressing room rather than having to walk all the way around the pitch, if you remember, where it used to be up in the corner of the um, east and north stands. Yes. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, yeah, a, a wondrous thing. A wondrous thing. There was a... I can't remember which, which TV station, but um, Darren Anderson mentioned something. It must have been yesterday, and he said... Because obviously he played in, in the Legends game at the weekend and he got, got to play in the changing rooms, and he, and he just likened the facilities to a five-star hotel. And yeah, right. absolutely right. You know, these players, you, know, you listen to Dimitar Berbatov being interviewed and Jurgen Klinsmann. These guys have played in the best stadiums around the world. And they said this is the best stadium they've ever played in. Mm. You know, there's no higher compliment that can be played, uh, that can be paid. Do you have, a, Daniel, do you have a favourite part of the stadium? Ah, oh, blimey. Um, do I have a, that's a great question. No, because you can't single one point out. I mean, I, I had a favourite part of the old stadium, but 
No, I don't have a favourite part here because all of it is just so good. You know, you're still exploring and walking around and, you know, you walk around the concourse in the East Stand. There's that big picture of Bill Nicholson. Um, you've got the shelf bar. There's just so many bits. You know, you've got the media lounge as well, which is during, which is open during the week, is the M Cafe, I think. And there's, you know, the, the gantry now, where I am, it's just so much nicer than the old one. I mean, the old one had character, right? You had the spiral staircase to go up and it was metal floors it was freezing in the winter it was covered in pigeon mess we've got, we've got carpet tiles up there now it's lovely it's warm <laughs> still outside but um uh, no I, I i don't have a favorite area genuinely that sounds really corny and cliche but it's just all magnificent i do like the dispensary on the fifth floor of the west end the dispensary bar that, that is just really classy all the little brass pipes and stuff i like that I must check it out. I've, I've got to admit, I've, I've only explored certain parts of the stadium, um, which has probably been south through to the. Well, I think every part of it on the on the lower part, except for the north, um, couldn't get couldn't get access to that. Unfortunately, when I was there for the test events, and, and yesterday it was just too packed to move around, um, and the floors. Yeah, so, are... yeah, go to the fifth floor of the West End blocks. 506 i think through to about 508 the dispensary mm -hmm. the bar there it's it, you know you can't stop taking pictures of it it's really nice. quick question for, for you john um was you went at the game but i i'm just intrigued to know what it sounded like on tv mm -hmm. particularly Loud. particularly that wall that i was in in my lofty position right at the top of the, the wall you're right at the top right i'm four i'm i'm four throw down of block three two four yeah, it's very very steep. Um, oh, you posted a picture on Twitter today, didn't you? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I yeah. saw that. I yeah. didn't see that. Yeah, yeah. It, it 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 came across well on the telly. Um, uh, it was loud. The crowd were loud, and you could almost hear them when the, the chant started going. It was sort of like people were like, "Wow, that's really loud!" And it's like they tailed themselves back a bit. But as, as soon as that first goal went in, the, the noise coming from that stadium was fantastic. Um, it, it really was good. It really, the the acoustics in, in there that that you know the U2 guy or the tour manager or whoever it was designed them did a magnificent job, and the sound is just captured perfectly. The one thing I say is weird is having the camera on the other side yeah. of the pitch is the is the weird thing. Um, yeah, that's going to take some getting used to. I think it's a new Premier League rule as well that you know certainly where there is an option, um, the television facilities like the gantry etc has to be on the same side as, as the dressing rooms so the commentators can get down and do the interviews on time and all that kind of stuff okay i didn't realize that um, I think that's, uh, right, yeah. that's a that's an that's an interesting rule mm. um should make them run <laughs> oh, I actually walked. Sorry to name drop. I actually walked off the gantry with Guy Mowbray yesterday, and he said this is a great stadium to work. You can be down in the tunnel area within a matter of minutes of the game finishing, and that's really important to them because the managers have to give an interview. I think within, I think it's within fifteen or twenty minutes of the final whistle. So, you know, especially in the East End and at Wembley, where it's on the other side, you know, it's a real performance to get round. Is it like a fireman's pole to get down? <laughs> no, there's a lift. <laughs> that's a p that would have been quite fun all steps all steps uh, that would um, have been quite fun talking of the atmosphere and that first goal um, we had a question from Zoe Pearson her Twitter handle is at Z underscore Pearson THF, THFC and she says is there any better sight than Sonny's smiling face isn't it so right that the player that has been so reliable when called upon be the one to etch his name in modern Spurs history it's quite it's been quite a season for Sonny when you consider um he was away at the start of the season um all that stuff with um you know his military service um winning the asian games not having to do his military service and then and then having this prolific spell where he's he's scored so many goals and I, it, he's probably um well he's one of uh, a few contenders for player of the season um Thoughts on that? Sonny, fitting that he scored the first goal? I'm one for symmetry. So Harry Kane got our last goal at the stadium, not the last goal, obviously, but our last goal. It would have been nice with everything that's happened to him over the last four or five years for him to get that. But as a, as a second choice, I think, as Zoe said, he plays with a, with a smile on his face. He's so amiable. The players all love him. He's a real character. 
And uh, yeah, if it wasn't going to be Harry Kane, Sonny would have been my second choice, absolutely. And um, yeah, what as you said, what a season he's had. Is it 17 goals for the season already now? And, yeah. You know, it's still a number of games left to go. And you know, for someone who doesn't always start, you think maybe they get a little bit, you know, downhearted. But I don't think he gives a manager a day's trouble. You know, and he's one of those players that you just want to have around he's an infectious personality and um you know, long may he say uh, wearing a white shirt in n17 yeah I'd, I, I'd echo that the, the the smile on his face is indicative of the man it's the way he the joy with which he plays football he you rarely see him upset or moaning or you know distraught and that smile just comes through in the way he plays and I, I'm, I'm so glad that it was him uh, you know he he deserves to be up there with the legends and who knows when we have legends games in the future hopefully he'll be there and on that pitch absolutely um, he's, he's yeah credit to him credit to him take nothing away from Janil Bennett he scored the first goal in the under 18 game it was a wonderful goal wasn't true it, it was really yeah um the i mean uh, so yeah great great to see sonny score um i think harry kane is somebody who's very self-determined, and I think he would have loved to have got that first goal, and and, and it would have been fitting, yeah. you know, the, the whole he's one off our own, and and like you say, the symmetry with, with the last stadium. Um, the long-suffering Spurs fan in me is just happy that a Spurs player scored the first goal. Part of and... me was worried. Part of me was just really worried that somebody would from Palace would would upset the party because. You know, going into that game, um, we haven't won a league game since Leicester, Leicester um, at Wembley on, on, on February the 10th. And even on that day, we, we, we made hard work of it. So it's not been a great time um, on the domestic front. We've okay, we've, 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 we've done well in, in the Champions League at the same time. A little bit of a paradox there, but it's not, not been a great time. And Palace wasn't, wasn't a given. Um, you know, Roy Hodgson's... Teams can can frustrate. He the way he sets sets them up. They can be fairly s- s- compact. Um, you only got to look at the last five top for league fixtures. We, well, although we've won each one, it's been very narrow. One nil wins each time. So, to me, yesterday was not a given. Everybody said about the atmosphere that's going to lift the players, etc., oh, yeah. etc. Et and, and no doubt it will. And no doubt it will help, etc. Being back at home. But for a m- minute, I don't subscribe to the view that that the atmosphere would intimidate the opposition in any way because I think that players are professional and you only look at look at our players when they've gone and played, for example, in Dortmund and, they, and this having to deal with this yellow wall and, and, and the atmosphere. They, they just get on and do it, yeah. do, I mean, do, the, do, do the job. So th- th- I was a bit nervous. I was, I was thinking, I really, really hope Palace don't. So I, I honestly don't care. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that, that Sonny's... Um, score the first goal, but I'm just glad that's more, more than anything that Spurs player um, got the very first goal in the new stadium. Absolutely, you know, you speak about professionalism. Take nothing away from the Spurs players as well. When I was watching them as, the, as they walked in, you know, they they weren't getting carried away with the marching band that was on the pitch at the time when they were walking around. You know, they were just focusing on the job. It was just another game to them. They had been at the stadium before. They trained there a couple of times, so for them it was just another game. And um, yeah, I was. Slightly disappointing in Crystal Palace, to be honest, yesterday. But, you know, they've scored in every game in 2019 in all competitions so far. Um, they won more games away from Selhurst Park than at Selhurst Park. I think they won f- three of the last four um, away in the Premier League. They scored three at Anfield, three at um, the Etihad, I think. And But I think they rolled over yesterday, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. Well, our, our, our players certainly played the game rather than, rather than the occasion which, which which I also think by the way they did um, the final game at White Hart Lane um, as you recall that game um, if we if we won it we would have secured second spot and, and we did exactly that and, and I think we were very professional in, in our outlook that day um, and as, as we were yesterday Palace are a funny one I mean they, they beat us in the cup this earlier this season and we had a weakened team, but generally when they've played us, um, I wasn't aware of the form, the form that you've just mentioned in, in terms of other games this season. But certainly when I see them against us, the way they've always set up is um, just really solid, difficult to break down, and then try try to get something on the on, on the break without really pressing a great deal. And and I felt yesterday that's 
pretty much what 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 they did. Other than I don't think they even hit hit us on the break at all. Um, contrast contrast that to us, by the way. Who I think we had. I I don't know if this stat is correct, but I, I saw it on Sky at half time yesterday um, on on Twitter, and and it said that um, we registered something like fourteen attempts um, on goal in the first half, which is more than in, in any other first half game at home or at Wembley this season. Wow. But to counter that, to counter to, just talking of first halves against Palace, after last night we haven't scored a goal in the first half in the Premier League against Crystal Palace for the last 18 games. There you go. There's a stat for you. Wow. Wow. That's that's quite something. I mean, for, you know, it was it was almost nice to to. Um, remember what winning was like i mean i was you know five games without a win three weeks since the last game it was nice to get back in into the swing of things really uh it, it really was um but yeah, i think the, 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 the occasion win. go on so in the first day to get a win that's a yeah. real monkey off our backs as well right so yeah you can just press on otherwise next up would have been in the league huddersfield already relegated will they put on a show how nervous will we be? You know, we've gone there, we've won, and now it's full steam ahead. Four more league games at home out of six league games that are remaining. You know, third place is ours for the taking. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if you, if, if you look in the run into the other teams, none of theirs are easy. I mean, you know, the Scum 1, 2, 3, 4, they've got five away games now. Have they? Uh, yeah, they've got Everton, Watford, Wolves, Leicester and Burnley away. That isn't easy. Mm-hmm. Wolves, They're, yeah, certainly not. So, well, no, even even Watford away isn't an easy game. Yeah, that's you know, true. That's true. So, you know, then they're, they're, they're going to come a cropper. Chelsea have got to um, go to Liverpool and to Man United and to Leicester. Mm-hmm. You know, Man United have got Man City and Chelsea, so it's all to play for. The, the, I mean, the question is, could it come down to goal difference? Really? We've got the same goal difference as Arsenal, haven't we? I think. At yeah, the moment, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It, it, it could well don't come down to goal difference. It could be a, a, that tight in there. This is a very dangerous thing to say on my part because if you asked me about a month or so ago, um, I would have said that top four, never mind top four, I would have said third, third place was a given and things have completely changed since then. Um, having said that, I still think in the position that we're in, I think we're, we're well placed to finish somewhere in the top four, whether that's fourth or third, I don't know. The, obviously, the only concern is that the... The form that we showed in the last five matches, if we continued in that vein of form, well, top four, regardless of what the other teams do, um, the top four would, would would be very difficult. But I think <sighs> pressing the reset button, I don't know if that's the right phrase, but, but but yeah, just getting that win yesterday, getting that monkey off the back, and hopefully that can be the point at which we can p- push on and, and it will just be, uh, just, you know, it will just be the point at which we, we sort of put, put a stop t- to... To the ruts and, and and the recent form going into that game, um, and go the other way, then I, um, there's no there's no reason with you know with whatever it is four four home games um, and only two away. Bournemouth City will be difficult, but that was always going to be the case regardless. Then hopefully we 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 can get over the line. Um, how good was Musa Sissoko yesterday? <laughs> oh, if only he would have scored at Anfield. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I- yeah. Can, can I just that 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 chance at Anfield? Um, I think there was only one ball on that would have got to Sonny, and there, it was a, a chip over the top. And I think the only player that could have made that would have been Deli Ali. I think the defending from Van Dijk in that situation was excellent. I don't want to pay him any praise, but it was he defended that excellently. And I think to, all Sissoko could do was shoot. I don't think there was any ball on to Sonny in that, in, in that situation, um, which is a pity. But I would have given Musa man of the match last night. I thought he was fantastic. He um, committed powerful. Uh, well, Ben Davies and Rose on that on that left hand side were both brilliant. I think Ben's more of a full back than he is a wing back, and I think with somebody sitting in front of him, he's a lot better player. Yeah, yeah they, uh, I thought he played really well yesterday. But it's a great credit to Musa Sissoko, who could have won that game and would have been feeling really, really down at the end when Liverpool, obviously, you know, got that late goal. Um, but he kept. He kept his head about him, and he was determined. He put in a great shift last night, and that's that's to his credit. And he's really turned it around this season. He has. He he's, he shows a level of consistency um, 
that's you know that's, that's worthy of a player. We mentioned Sun earlier as possible player of the season. I think Sissoko has got to be in in that running. Certainly, most improved player. But yeah. um, there've been there've been a few times last night where um, we lost the ball or, or we looked in trouble, and he and he would sweep up or, or effectively you know be a firefighter in those scenarios. But not just that. Not just also his um, his ability to break things up and take the ball forward at pace and, and very quickly bring it forward. There were a few times last night where he showed, and it's not something you'd, you'd normally, what well, in the past we would have said about Musa Sissoko, but he showed a lot of good touch and good, yeah. and good skill. And and you can't help but thinking that confidence is a bit big, plays a big part in that. And also playing regularly. I mean, the more football he gets under his about the, the fresher he's going to be and, and, and the better his touch is going to be and coupled with with a bit of confidence and, and fans getting behind him which which they are um he's we're seeing the true Musa so- so- Soko we're, we're seeing the player that we paid 30 million which actually looks like a snip now um from Newcastle I think a lot of players with a weaker personality than him would have crumbled after his first couple of years but he's persevered he's kept going Poch to his credit his ultimate credit has kept faith in him, and that shows what a good man manager is. You know, keep working at it, and it will come good. And you know, listen, he's not Diego Maradona, right? So let's not get too carried away. But you know, he can play, and he's starting to show, as you said quite rightly, why he was bought in, and he's justifying that fee. You know, he's not. He's again, he's not Moussa Dembélé yet, but he showed last night glimpses of what Dembélé can do. He's strong, hard to shrug off the ball. Good going forward, again to a point. Neither of them scored enough goals, Dembele or Moussa Sissoko. But, you know, there is a certain similarity when Sissoko's on form that he he could, if the wind blows in the right direction, fill Moussa Dembele's boots. And as much as, as I said, he's strong, he's determined, hard to shake off the ball. And, you know, he almost links midfield to the attack, right, in the way, in the way he carries it forward. Yeah, he's committed and he's powerful and he's become that archetypal big, strong centre midfield. Uh, but in, it, there are elements of his game that need to improve he, in, in, the, in the same vein as there was with Frund, Zakora and Palacios, I think. Um, I think we can do better, though. I think Wanyama a couple of seasons ago was immeasurably better than Sissoko. And the question is, if Victor and Dai had been fit this season, would we be talking about Sissoko now? I don't know. I think he's improved and he's plugged a gap, but I, I think we we can improve on him. Possibly, and, and no, that that's a fair point. But but also by the same token, um, Dai has been it. Obviously, uh, Wanyama has, has, has long term in, injury, and, and okay, whilst he's back, he's he's finding his way back and he's on the bench. But you know, recently we've had Winks injured. Good to see him back, by the way, last night. Um, Dyer injured and. Dembele gone, and it's almost as if the whole weight of the world has been put on Sissoko's shoulders. But he's he's yeah. in midfield. But he, nonetheless, he's he's getting on with it and and, and doing a good job. Um, credit to him. Um, just I, I want to look briefly ahead to the Champions League and obviously our next game in the stadium, which is Man City. Um, but just for, sort of final thoughts and, and reflections on on the stadium. Um, for me, um, I, I think it was fantastic. I'm, I'm going to pick a few hot holes if I can. Um, it took it took a while getting back from the stadium, um, but that's I think there are going to be improvements um, made to White Hart Lane Station or whatever it'll be top the top of the railway station. I think, but that's, I think that's not till due till the beginning of next season. Um, it took probably it took me probably slightly longer, but then I I don't know, maybe maybe that's just because um Wembley was a bit closer for me. Um it took a while walking down the high roads. Um the volume of traffic was was more, but that was always going to be the case when you go from 36 to 60,000. Um a few teething problems within the concourse, but again that's expected. It's Everybody's finding their way. The fans are finding their way. I suppose um, all, all the stewards are finding their way. Every, every, it's new. Um, I suspect, by the way, I don't know wh- wh- how you feel about this, Daniel, but I, I suspect that the concourse, 
at the moment there's a novelty factor with the stadium. Yeah. I think. And I think a lot of people want to be there. They want to, you know, check out the bar and, and the stadium and have a wonder, etc. I think in time, not not that the those attractions will, will be any less because it, fan- it's all fantastic. But I think once people have seen some of that, they will probably maybe go back to their, you know, some of the pubs that, that, that they've been used to be go- used to be going to over a number of years and it maybe won't be as crowded within the stadium i, I certainly hope so but we'll, <laughs> we'll see i definitely think there'll be less walking around uh the ground that's for sure yeah people yeah. you know seek to their routine right. <coughs> excuse me sorry yeah um and uh yeah um a little bugbear of mine is the fact they didn't have smoked salmon bagels in the new stadium which they did at white hart lane um well certainly didn't in some parts of the stadium um but uh there you go um bagels and tottenham go hand in hand i've been saying it for years but nobody seems to believe me um Let's, let's let's talk about Man City. Um, but we haven't had too many podcasts since um, since the Southampton game. We, we we recorded one on Monday after the Liverpool match, and that's partly because there haven't been any competitive games in that period of time. And, and during that period of time, we had a Champions League draw. We've been drawn against Man City in the quarterfinals, or an all English tie, which which I think most people wanted to avoid. Um, but there we go. We, we've got City at home, and then uh, and then a week later at the Etihad, and then straight after that, we've got them again at the Etihad in in, in the league. It's funny how fixtures sometimes throw that up, but that's what it is. Um, should we overcome Man City, we, we'll have um, either Juventus or Ajax in, in the semi-finals. Should we overcome them? Um, Man City next on Tuesday. If I start with you, John, how, how do you see that panning out that that game and and that tie? Even do you think we've we've got enough to get past Pep City? We have turned up against the big teams this season, um, especially in the Champions League. Uh, so I uh, and in the past as well against Real Madrid. So I've got a feel we'll we'll beat them in one of these ties it, it, for for sure. And it'll probably be the home match, and I think the crowd will get us over the line. Um, I think they're vulnerable. They they are vulnerable at the back, and I think we can get the, get on them if we can keep the form that we've got going. I think we'll be fine because um, we, we the full ninety minutes. I, Palace didn't offer much, but we were a, a, a far superior team. And if we can get to that level against City, I think we'll be all right. We're not. We're not a walkover. We're not. The results might. The last five results might say we've been a bit of a pushover, but I don't think that's true. I think. I think we'll do okay against Man City. Um, I, I would take a, a draw in the league, but I, I think we'll win one of the Champions League games. But whether or not we'll go through, I don't want to say. Because I'll, 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 I'll jinx it one way or the other. <laughs> it's a huge task, you know. Yeah. Um, Whoever you're going to get in the quarterfinals of the Champions League, it's not going to be a pushover. It's not like getting drawn at Carabag, is it? You know, it's you know, this is proper. This is what it's all about. And I'd rather be involved worrying about a Manchester City two-legged quarterfinal and then playing them with them top of the league and us in third than not having to worry about that, if you know what I mean. So um, we live for these games. We look forward to these ties. The fact it's not a Barcelona or a Real Madrid. Well, you know what? We've played them over the last two years and Juventus and we, you know, we've, we've, we've done okay against them. So now it's Man City. I think back a couple of years, they had a hundred percent record coming to White Hart Lane. And was it October of 2016, 2017, whatever it was. Sorry, 2016. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, we destroyed them. We battered them. So it's doable. It's winnable. They can have an off day. We can, we can peak. It, it's 11 v 11, that old cliche. They're a very good side. Take nothing away from them. That you know, They may yet go on to win all four. You never know. They've won one already. They're in a decent position in the FA Cup, obviously, with their semi-final at the weekend. Who knows? Uh, and if it's a choice between them or Liverpool to win the league, I think we're all on the same page on that one. We'd rather City win it, despite the way they've managed to buy themselves success. But yeah, we can beat them. We can. It's not going to be easy, but we can beat them. The atmosphere, I can't, I really can't wait. I was, you know, what well, I was there for the for the both the test events. Um, I felt 
as much as it was a great time to, to be there for, for, for both of those test events, I, I thought it was a little bit subdued. Even when there was a chance, um, it, it was great at the, at the point at which there was a chance, and then suddenly it would just be dead, it'd be quiet, which was, I suppose, what you'd expect for it. Effectively, it's got that sort of, those Legends games have got that sort of um, pre-season game that you know the, the friendly yeah. that we, we, we used to always have in august of white Hart lane a few years ago last night was everything that i hoped it would be um the atmosphere was better it was great but i think i think tuesday is gonna gonna be even better i mean I, I think the intensity and the pace at which the game will be played will be uh, a notch higher than than um than last yeah. night the champions league music as well this is going to be the first time. Do you know? It just occurred to me. This will be the first European game at at Spurs, at Tottenham, at White Hart Lane, or whatever you want to call it, at home, at, not at Wembley, since we played Borussia Dortmund in the Europa League quarter final. Was it? I think it was quarter final in 2016, March 2016. Yeah, because we had the season before we played the league games at Wembley. Correct. Wembley, yeah. Yeah. Europe, yeah. So. yeah. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. It's been a long time coming, and I think you know there, there's a, there was always something special at White Hart Lane about European nights under the floodlights, and I think, I think, I think, I do think that we will be that twelfth man on on Tuesday night, and I think that will carry us through um, certainly on on the night. Whether it's enough to do so over two legs and into the next round, I don't know. Um, my own thought is that I I, I fancy us to go through. But I think we'll lose the league game at the Etihad. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Exc- I'll exc- take that. Exciting times ahead, yeah. nonetheless. You win your home games, you still got full, uh, third place, right? Yeah, and then yeah. pick up a win at Bournemouth as well. Um, yeah. I can't really see anyone beating us at home this season. Who who we've got left? We've got Huddersfield, we've got Brighton, West, uh, Ham. West Ham. I think Everton. we're going to buy them all. And Everton, yeah. Home to Everton, so. yeah. Yeah, I can't yeah. see us losing anything no, in the season. The West Ham one makes me slightly nervous. So they're 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 going to be determined to, to spoil the party. But um, you know, if they're just they're not game, good enough. They're, they're not good. They're not good enough. But they can. They, they can. They have been a little bit of a bogey team in 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 recent seasons. Um, oh, we are literally the only game that they get up for it at any point in their season. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, um, they're knuckle dragging fans of cretins, but I, I think they're they're absolutely pony at the moment. So they, they, I don't fear them. Especially, it, it, you know, for them it's going to be their cup final. For us, it's another three points on the way to third place. You mentioned professionalism earlier on. That's how our players will take it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, any final thoughts on? On the stadium, it's nice to be home. No, it's not. Um, just to see, did you see the news about the uh, world record profits that we made? Yeah, yeah, Which, that's quite nice. Of course, it is. It's um, you know, I think, I think you also have to look at the financing for the um, capital projects. I'm not sure how they were reflected in there to end up with that number of um, of profit, but it's. Again, it's better to have it than not to have it. And it just shows how much the club has changed and how much football has changed as well um, relatively quickly to generate that, that that level of income and that level of profit out of it. It's it's a well-run ship and we've paid tribute to the chairman and the board already during this um, this podcast. So, again, an, another doff of the cap to them. Absolutely. Right, Um the next podcast we shall be recording, um, not this weekend because we're not playing, um, but a week Sunday, the day after the Huddersfield ma- match. Um, my guess on that occasion will be, I've not confirmed, or not decided who they will be. So, um, yeah, anyway, next podcast will, 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 will be then. Um, all that's left for me to say is thank you, Daniel, firstly. Thank you for having me. Enjoyed it. Thank you, John. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Dav. And until next time, the future's bright, the future's lily white. Good night. Come on, Tottenham, stick it in the goal. Come on, Tottenham, the pace so bloody slow. You are the first team, the last team my dreams have ever seen. Put on that lily white and run onto that green. 
White Hart Lane has seen its pain, it's had its lows and highs. We've fought our team through thick and thin and all those boring nights. And when the game is done, we'll sing a song and talk it out all night. Hey! Come on, Tottenham, stick it in the goal. Come on, Tottenham, don't be so bloody slow. You are the first team, the last team, my dreams have ever seen. Pull on that lily white and run on to that green. Oh, we've seen them come, we've seen them go, the names up on our shirt. Gods have failed as men are hailed and faces in the dirt. Now gather round and sing it out and we'll talk out all the hurt.